What's happening, road dogs and highway hounds? <laughs> Dewan Hart uh, asked me what I got against Ethereum and uh, haven't touched on that for a while. So what I have against Ethereum is it's a centralized coin like Ripple. So when R3 sues Ripple, if their business model, you know, if their business model crumbles, so does their coin. So R3 is suing Ripple because, you know, now you got financial risk from uh, other things. Um, and uh, Ethereum is the same way. Now, another thing I especially don't like about Ethereum and probably Ripple too, but more so with Ethereum is Joe Lubin, the chief operating officer over there, is a former Goldman Sachs guy. He worked at Goldman Sachs. There were like two other people that worked at Gold, for Goldman Sachs, big banks. Um, they're holding hands with R3, which are the big banks. And the big banks, Bitcoin and Litecoin threaten banking, like it, the internet threatens newspapers, okay? So you see that people just read their news online now, they don't get newspapers anymore. So that being the case, oh man, I just spit on myself, piece of egg. <laughs> but uh, um, And Joseph Lubin was a hedge fund manager, okay? Now hedge fund managers deal with big institutional investors, right? So, they had a pre-sale or a pre-mine. It's the same thing. It's, you know, for all practical purposes. And so when uh, when they did the pre-sale, pre they opened it up. I was there. I witnessed it. I looked at it. I thought about buying it at the pre-sale. I'm glad I didn't because I'm more principled than I am money-driven in this space. I like the freedom aspect of it. You know, Liberty Freight Service, my company, our company motto is freedom for all. So if you do business with us, my goal is to make your life more free. So Bitcoin and Litecoin enable that. Ethereum and these other centralized coins uh, are giving the control back to the banks. It's the, it, to me, it's the antithesis of what Bitcoin and Litecoin stand for. Bitcoin and Litecoin will bring you more freedom. Um, just like this ban that's going on in China right now. Uh, you know, BTC China is a, cent is a centralized company. So when the government comes in and they say, you stop, they stop. You see what happens? That's the centralization. So if... Ethereum, I think they're based in New York. If New York says, you stop, guess what? The company of Ethereum stops or they have to move or, or whatever. There's risk involved with centralization. Ethereum and Ripple are centralized things. They are vulnerable to this type of risk. They're vulnerable to lawsuits by the R3 consortium. They sue Ripple, Ripple suffers. So there's a lot more risk, you know, involved with Bitcoin and, and or not Bitcoin, but Ethereum and uh, and Ripple and the centralized types of coins where you have a company around them. Now with Bitcoin and Litecoin, it is the network. It's only a network. Now these companies like BTC China, Coinbase, they can be shut down and they can make life difficult for those of us who invest in it and, and trade in it, but they can't stop it. Liberty Freight Service, if the government comes in here and tells me, hey, you can't trade in it, we can't trade in it. But, you know, it shut me down, you know, so, I mean, it wouldn't shut me down because i just do it with a dollar, which is mostly what we do anyway. But, uh, let's see now, it's not going to stop, okay? I've been in this space for a long time. You're going to get the new people that are going to freak out and be like, oh my gosh, BTC China bans, you know, whatever and people are freaking out, it's over, it's done. You get Jamie Dimon, the uh, criminal who took all kinds of bailout money and you know, the guy's a scumbag in my book. But uh, you know, I don't know why people are listening to him. I think it's just 
FUD, for lack of a better word. I don't like that word. I think it's abused too much. But, you know, these hedge fund manager types like Joe Lubin use the media, they use their connections, and they manipulate markets. Go watch Jim Cramer Manipulation. Type in Jim Cramer Manipulation on YouTube and watch him, and you'll get an understanding on how hedge fund managers think. Maybe not Joe Lubin himself, but, you know, yeah, whatever. But uh, there's, there's more risk involved with centralized coins. Plus, the pre-mine, uh, they raised like 60, I can't remember the exact numbers, but it's a, roughly 80% of the entire supply of Ethereum and Ethereum Classic because it was pre-fork. So when I, when I bought, or when I, when I would have bought Ethereum, okay, um, at the pre-sale, but I didn't, if I did, I would have bought at the pre-sale. When it went live, I would have taken it off and I would have put it on a paper wallet and I would have stopped and I wouldn't have done nothing with it. And then when that Ethereum Classic fork happened and and all these forks, I would have Ethereum Classic and Ethereum hard fork. And all this stuff means I would have both of them. So Joe Lubin is a hedge fund manager. He goes to... J.P. Morgan, Chase, uh, Bundesbank, and all these, you know, Deutsche Bank, and all these guys, and he's saying, hey, and these guys will throw you a million dollars. They raised $60 million and got 80% of the, the entire supply. So that gives somebody who is savvy, like a hedge fund manager, an incredible amount of control over that blockchain and the price of that blockchain. They're also going to take Ethereum and make it a proof of stake coin instead of a proof of work coin. That means rule by the rich. And that was a plan from the beginning. So if you are if you know that from the beginning and you want to invest whatever and be a major player in Ethereum, you know that you it, by being involved in the pre-mine, and if you had inside information and knew the amount of coins, unlike the GDP, the general dumb public like me. You would know how much you wanted to uh, invest and how much control you would have. So that being the case, with a proof of stake and with 80% of the coins pre-mined, you could have, you could be holding 51% of the entire supply and have absolute total control. I'm not saying that happened, but it's possible. And if you had foreknowledge and you were in the planning stage and you were a bank or if you were associated with J.P. Morgan. You would have a very good interest in having 51% of the, the supply. $60 million was raised in the pre-sale, and that is a lot of money. And it's not coming from people like me, and it's probably not coming from people like you. It's That's what I have against Ethereum and a lot of other things. You know, the I mean, just the idea of a world supercomputer is not necessarily something I want. I don't want driverless cars or driverless trucks, you know. I mean... I mean, I've had, I've, I've been in some of the newer trucks that have got the driver enabled stuff and I got passed at 29 degrees on an ice, icy road by a dump, by a uh, truck or by a tow truck. And the sensor on the front of the truck picked up that there was something close to me in front of me and they locked on the brakes in ice in tight quarters. That's not good. Computers don't need to run the world. Human, the human element, human element is invaluable but what do I have against Ethereum I've got a lot against Ethereum if you want Ethereum I always post a link down in my description to www.rsk.co everything that is being designed on Ethereum if you like it you can transfer that to RSK labs and you can run that program on their Turing complete model using Bitcoin and Litecoin maybe not today but in the in the future, it's the potential is there. Bitcoin and Litecoin are the gold and silver of cryptocurrency. All the other ones are doing something else. But whatever development they can come up with, if it can't be done on Bitcoin and Litecoin, that's why I keep hammering away on nickel coin because inflation can be a valuable tool. It's it's just been abused in our society, and we've seen a lot of that. So what do I have against Ethereum? A lot. Adios, muchachos.